So welcome to the third part. In this part here, we want to kind of focus on a special class of matrices. We want to focus on the class of matrices that are two by two, where the diagonal is A's, and on the anti-diagonal, we have B and minus B. So they have different signs. And what we're assuming is that these numbers are all real numbers, so they be real. And so the nice thing is, if you come across one of these matrices of this type, you can actually just immediately write down what the eigenvalues are. The eigenvalues are going to be A plus or minus BI. And the other thing that we can do is that there's an interesting way of decomposing this matrix. So you take your, your complex number associated to A plus BI, and what you do is you rewrite it in polar form. So that's something that we talked about in the last lecture, how to write it in polar form. So th this is the modulus, the length of the vector, and then the, the theta here corresponds to an angle that you're making with the vector with respect to the complex plane. And the theorem says that you can take your original matrix and you can decompose it as the modulus of the complex number down the diagonal, so you get a diagonal matrix, and you can multiply it by cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, and cos theta. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to think about, well, what is what are these two operations doing? Well, this operation here, this matrix here, is rotating by theta degrees. Okay, so this part here is rotating, and this other part right here is stretching your vector. So if you're multiplying a vector by the matrix C of this type, what you're really doing is you're first rotating the vector by the angle theta, and then you're stretching out the vector, or you're shrinking the vector, depending upon is this, if this is bigger than one or smaller than one. Okay, so that's what's happening here. Uh, let me just give you a proof of the first part, just because it's pretty straightforward to do. Because what we're going to do is we want to look at the determinant uh, C minus lambda I2. And in this case, we have A minus uh, lambda, negative B, B, A minus lambda. And this is equal to A minus lambda uh, squared plus B squared equals zero. So there's a characteristic equation. Now, normally what you could do is you could try to uh, expand this all out and then solve for lambda. But let me just do a little trick here for you here. So what you have is a minus lambda squared is equal to negative b squared. So when you take the square root of both sides, you get a minus lambda is equal to plus or minus bi. When then rearranging tells me that a plus or minus bi is equal to lambda. So that's why we have our complex eigenvalues showing up here. Okay, so the eigenvalues are indeed A plus BI. So this is a, if you put your matrix in this form, you can always cook up different eigenvalues, or you can make a, a matrix with any particular complex number you want using this form. And if we go back to our first example, which is right here, the matrix A, you notice that it actually does have the form the same number down the diagonal and numbers with a different sign on the anti-diagonals, right? So we have A is equal to zero and B is equal to one. And so this part here is telling me that the eigenvalues are lambda is equal to zero plus or minus one times I, which is equal to plus or minus I, which is what we actually saw as before. Right, so we actually computed that before, but this gives us a different way of getting that information. And now let's look at this decomposition thing about what's going on here. All right, so we're going to take our complex number and we have to rewrite it in polar form. So if lambda is equal to zero plus i, that means in polar form, lambda is equal to uh, the length of lambda and we have cos pi 2. So I, I'm just using the, uh, uh, figuring out the argument here. So we have i sine pi 2. And in this case, this is just 1, right? So this is 1. 
and then this is cos pi 2 plus i sine pi 2. And then using the theorem, what we have is the matrix A can be written as 1, 0, 0, 1, and then we have cos pi 2 minus sine pi over 2, uh, sine pi over 2, and cos pi over 2. And here, this one here means rotate by pi over 2, which is 90 degrees. And this here is stretch by multiplying by 1. Notice that this is actually the identity matrix. So if we go back to our very first example here, let's go, uh, oops, move forward a page. This is exactly what we're seeing in this example, because when we're rotating, we're not changing the length. All we're doing is we're changing the direction right here. If I had had some numbers here, instead of zeros, I would have been probably would have changed the stretching factor, and so I could have pointed it into a different direction. So what we're seeing here is that we're rotating by 90 degrees but not stretching anything. It's actually being described in this particular example right here. We first rotate by 90 degrees, and then we uh, stretch it. But in this case, it's the identity matrix, so we're not really stretching it by any particular length. So that's happening in the special case of matrices of this form. So in the last part of today's case, what we want to do is look at the general case of two by two matrices. So again, I'll just get pause for a minute to get things set up, and then we'll move to the last part of today's lecture.